Hello, I'm Beth Kempton and I just wrote this book, Freedom Seeker. It's all about how to live more, worry less and do what you love. And as you might expect in a book about freedom, I was drawn to the metaphorical image of a bird, but I never anticipated becoming quite so fascinated by our feathered friends. What I discovered was amazing. It turns out there are some incredible parallels between bird flight and the human psyche, and I want to share one of those with you today. The question of exactly how birds navigate the skies has been the subject of scientific debate for many, many years. What we do know is that most birds use a combination of three tools to understand where they are and how to get to where they want to go. Firstly, they use landmarks. Secondly, the sun and stars. And thirdly, the Earth's magnetic field. Natural landmarks like mountains and rivers and man-made landmarks like tall buildings can be really helpful pointers for birds, but only if they've flown a particular route before. So that first navigational tool is all about knowledge and experience. And then the sun and the stars are reliable indicators of position and orientation, especially when the weather is clear. So that second tool is all about information and guidance. And then last but not least, birds are thought to use the Earth's magnetic field to navigate. We aren't exactly sure how they do this, although scientists do believe that birds have a special sense called magnetoreception, which is a kind of inner compass, which allows them to detect the magnetic field and perceive location, altitude and direction. So this third tool is all about using their sixth sense. See where I'm going here? It's the same with us humans, as we're trying to understand where we are and how to navigate to where we want to go in life. We have to use the same three tools. First, we have to look at our knowledge and experience, what we've learned from the road that we've taken so far, our background, education, the books that we've read, the conversations we've had, the things said by the people who inspire us, the things that we've learned, the jobs that we've done, the places we've been, all those things, they all add up to that knowledge and experience. And then we have to fill in the gaps with information and guidance. This is about research, asking questions, talking to people who've done it before, finding role models and mentors, taking classes, gathering information and being prepared to ask for help when we need it. That's the second. And then there's the third and final tool of navigating life. It's our sixth sense, intuition. It's that inner knowing, the answers that we already have inside if we just ask and then listen. So if you ignore that first tool, you risk repeating past mistakes if you don't use your knowledge and experience. If you don't employ the second, that information and guidance, then you dive blindly into the unknown. But ignoring the third tool is the most dangerous of all because your intuition is the voice of your free self calling. Women in particular have a very strong sense of intuition, but when I was researching my book, one of the stories that blew me away about intuition was actually from a guy who I met in Costa Rica whose intuition saved his life. His name was Darren and he'd been living with a horrendous mystery illness that had completely taken over his body. Pain, shakes, nausea, terrible mood swings, all of it. And by the time he decided that he could no longer go on, he'd spent $400,000 on medical bills, his business was on his knees and his marriage has fallen apart. You can imagine how horrendous it had been for him. And the thing is, he wasn't alone. 22 people in his town had similar symptoms and two of them had died. It was the scariest thing and no one knew what was wrong with him. So with all his hope gone, he decided to take his vintage Porsche and drive up the coast of California and drive off a cliff. But as he approached Big Sur, he remembered that an old friend lived nearby and he felt drawn to call on him, even though he'd not seen him in years. Before he knew it, he found himself at his friend's front door, spilling out his story of everything that had been going on. And his friend said, you know what? I know a woman who might just be able to help. She was a kinesiologist. There wasn't any ordinary consultation. She was a medicine woman and she took out a collection of old battered suitcases each filled with hundreds of tiny vials that appeared empty, but were labeled with the name of a disease. She did some energy work on Darren, and then she hovered her hands over these suitcases until she was drawn to a particular group of vials, and then one in particular. I think you have ciguatera, she told him. They went through a load of other tests and realized that she was right, he did. And ciguatera is known as red tide disease, 
Um, it's called that after the red tide phenomenon of harmful algae blooms that produce toxins in high quantities in the sea. And probably what happened was that Darren was poisoned when he was out surfing. It was incredible that she found out what was wrong with him, but now, obviously, he wanted a cure and was completely crushed when he was told there's no effective treatment or antidote for ciguatera. He wasn't going to accept that. The medicine woman had used this miraculous method to get the diagnosis, so Darren thought maybe she can find the cure in the same way. And he printed out, literally printed out from his printer, every known healing ingredient in the world, threw them on her office floor and asked her to feel the words. She was unsure, but she went ahead and she hovered her hands over the words and just called out words as they came to her that, from the energy that she was sensing. He scribbled it all down, common garden herbs, some rare plants he'd never heard of, and he gathered all of them, brought them to her, and she prepared them for him. And guess what? It worked. His symptoms disappeared and he made a full recovery, just like that. Now, if this miracle really did happen, as Darren himself told it to me, so I completely believe that it did, then besides the hopeful implications for anyone else with ciguatera, it's powerful evidence of the importance of allowing ourselves to be guided not only by what we know and get told by others, but what we feel deep down. It demonstrates just how important it is to listen to what our intuition is telling us. If Darren hadn't acted on that pull to visit his old friend, he would never have connected with the medicine woman whose alternative treatment methods saved his life. You know, in the same way that birds are thought to switch between those navigation methods depending on their environment, we can also manipulate those three navigation tools as and when we need. If you consciously choose your direction of travel and use all of those tools to guide you, then you have every chance of getting to exactly where you want to be. And just in case those three tools aren't quite enough, I wrote Freedom Seeker for you to be a constant companion on your quest for feeling free. I hope you'll carry its transformational tools and potent wisdom and stories like Darren's with you for the rest of your life and use your navigation tools to get exactly where you want to go.